What's up guys, I'm Matt Reisinger. Steve Basic. And we are talking ICF Foundations. We got a good build show for you today. Let's get going. All right guys, y'all know Steven Basic Architect. We're at a Howell Custom Builders project that Steve designed. Steve, this is a beautiful foundation. Storybook looking really with this setting. Blue green building concepts did the work. Father, son team right up your alley. How cool, man. It's, it's family run business. And this is the block. You're using an ICF block from Logix, uh, which appears to be two or three inches of foam inside yep. and outside. Two and five eighths. And you know roughly what our R value is here? Yeah, they call it around R25 ish, okay. is what they're calling it. But they, they take into consideration some air films and stuff. But yeah, it's in that 21 plus range. And we'll I suspect Logix can give you bigger, varying amounts of we foam. We get varying amounts, and... varying core depths. Mm -hmm. This is a six and a quarter inch core. Okay. These are two and five eighths. This measures 11 and, 11 and three quarters. They come in four foot lengths, 16 inches tall. And they your standard stack block. Stack these guys. They stack them. And they're putting the rebar in as they're stacking. I'm assuming, right? They put the they yeah they put the rebar in as they bring the blocks up. So you, they'll start with the corners, just like you would do a typical masonry wall, and kind of set the elevations and then infill from the corners to the inside. And then as they go up in lifts, they put the required re reinforcing bars in. But these straps, you can see, they're set for number four bars in the middle okay. and number five bars on the end. So Logix, you know, th these companies are thinking ahead, like what are the situations that we're going to have? Right. Sometimes a four bar, sometimes a five bar. Let's put both in there. And uh, just to reiterate, I'm sure you guys know this, but when you say the number on rebar, divide that by eight and that's the size. So a number four bar is half inch thick uh, steel rebar and a number five bar is five eighths. Right. So once you pour that wall solid, that's a serious wall. And what's cool is this weighs nothing. So putting this foundation together, these forms don't weigh that much at all. Did you have a chance to see the uh, uh, all the work they did in terms of shoring this up and getting? Oh yeah, I have braced? like two or three build show videos. Oh, go there and check them out. Shows. All right, we'll link and, below uh, to those. Yeah, where we right from the we did fast footings down here. We can't see it now because they're um, covered, but it's a fabric footing. Okay. That just hangs inside, and those guys did that, and then they we did it. Dan from Blue Green Building Concepts walked me through the whole system. Very cool. Go check out those videos. But just to walk you through the process, footing went down first, and that's just a standard, uh, you know, concrete base of the house, like a shoe for the house to sit all the weight onto. And then they lay the Logix blocks up all in, they get all poured in one lift, right? Yep. Uh, so these are nine foot, 10 foot tall? Yeah, th these are probably about 12, or yeah, about 10 foot tall. Okay. 120 inches, roughly. And then the black stuff you're seeing on the outside is a uh, tough and dry waterproofing membrane system that is compatible. You gotta be a little cautious about putting any peel and sticks on here or other products because an asphaltic based product could actually eat through this EPS yep. foam. So you gotta be a little cautious about that. Check out my other videos with the poly wall system. And then the insulation board on the outside isn't so much for insulation, is it? It's a, it's a protection board is what it's actually called. And it's an oriented fiberglass, so water can migrate through it vertically. Got so it. it becomes kind of a drainage system to your wall as well as the protection board. Got it. Now we got something really cool in the basement. Let's meet you downstairs. All right, Steve, you got your gravel for your foundation in for drainage, but this is a walkout foundation. Why is this door sill so high above the gravel? So we set this down a little because we're using this product. It's called Glavel. You're holding it there. <laughs> it's a foam glass gravel. Looks like charcoal, probably about as light as charcoal too, but it has an insulating value of R1.7 per huh. inch. So the idea here, and it's, it's a low carbon uh, material, so okay. we're not putting a high carbon insulation under here. So we're being sensitive in, in that aspect of the build. And uh, you know we, we're gonna put about 16 inches, so we had to make sure that our foundation was deep enough. And back here, to get the walk out, we had to push this wall four feet into the ground oh, anyway. Wow. So we were already at that depth. We just used this as a way to backfill bring and bring that, bring that up. Which is kind of cool because you're automatically insulated at the slab edge with this ICF. So once you put this you know, 16 inches of gravel in, 
R27. I'm assuming you'll put a vapor right barrier on, on top yeah, of that. Yeah, we'll, we'll have a Stego wrap or something of the like, yeah, where we set that on top. We'll bring that up and, and tape it off to the wall there, and it'll all be finished on the inside here. That's really cool. I'm excited to see that. And it got delivered to the job site in these giant bags. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, I wish we were here when they were doing it, but what they do is they take the excavator, they attach it to the four clips on the bag, they hang it over here, and they just slice the bottom and then just drag it across, and that's how you distribute it, and then that's they'll just awesome. rake it out. So then these footers that were used just for temporary bracing, those will all get fully buried in that. Yeah, these, well, these are actual footings that carry the column. Now, oh, they are, okay. You, you sit there and say, well, what kind of guys are putting these on, on the angle, right? <laughs> were they drunk when they were putting these in? But if you were here a couple weeks ago when they had all the bracing, we had to put the footings in and pour it according to the bracing. Now, the important thing about the footing is that the center of the footing right there is where the center of the footing needs to be. Mm -hmm. The shape of the footing doesn't really matter. doesn't matter because it's just exerting that pressure yep. in this area. So the fact that it had to be rotated a little bit to miss the shoring uh, of the ICFs gotcha. is what was happening there. So that's why a couple of these are off kilter, but the center of these footings are spot on. That's pretty awesome. And the other thing I want to ask you about, Steve, before we uh, finish the video, in your other videos, did you discuss these bucks? I've not seen this buck before. This is pretty cool looking. Yeah, so it's called the Pro Buck, and it's, it's made to be compatible with this. So it's dimensionally um, similar so that the Pro Buck slides right into the core. Mm -hmm. And you can see, I mean, it has the straps, eight inch centers, yep. so that we can now attach a treated buck. That's what we'll attach Screw our windows right and it. doors to. And then down below here, in an effort to fill, remember this wall is about five feet tall. Mm -hmm. So you can see they cut a couple holes and that's how they filled the concrete. Uh, so they used the pro buck as kind of the screed to, keep, to uh, keep the concrete from pouring out, but sets that opening up really nice. I mean, this is like textbook beautiful, how Custom Homes keeps a really clean, beautiful job site. Last question before we move on though, or before we wrap up, foundation's done. Waterproofing is done. It looks like they've also completed their exterior drainage on the house. I didn't see a sump pit anywhere. What are they doing about Yeah, we're going to have a sump pit. They just didn't cut it in. It's down around the back corner there. So they still have a little bit of work to do okay. to uh, get some of that stuff in. So Gotcha. But you got to remember, the, the slab is, bottom of slab is about 16 inches up. So we still got some room to yeah, put Yeah, you got a, some work. Oh, yeah, you got, got a plenty pipe of room. And stuff in. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't have to go inside here. So, so cool. Guys, but, if you're not currently watching Steve's video, he's shooting a video a week, uh, published every single Friday, I think. Fridays. Uh, on buildshownetwork.com. And he made several videos you know, getting into the real nitty gritty and minutia on this project. Beautiful job. Absolutely love it. And you can follow him on Instagram as well to hear what's going on in all his really cool jobs because Steve is doing projects not just in Boston, but really all over the nation right now. Yeah, we got we have so much just really interesting stuff. I'm very fortunate that, you know, clients like this, thinking outside the box, alternatives, builders like Howell that just say, yeah, we'll do that, we'll figure it out. And, uh, and they got these guys, Blue Green Building Concepts, who are just, I learned so much for those guys. That's so cool. I need to go back and watch all those videos. So it's, it's awesome. All right, guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. You know we've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build, Build Show. Show.